All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be a full review of this knife, and this is the Spyderco Akuchi, designed by Paul Alexander. And the Akuchi is a knife that I've been interested in for a long time. I've actually seen it in person at stores a couple times and never pulled the trigger until I saw this knife for sale by Indiana Knives at a bit of a discount because a customer had returned it saying that the detent was too strong. And so it's normally about $140 I got it for 115 and decided, you know, why not? I can uh, get it for a little bit of a discount and put it in my pocket and collect my thoughts on it and do a review. So I've done that and uh, I've got my thoughts together. And so here is the review. So first of all, this is a really interesting design. Uh, I have another knife by Paul Alexander, the Aroboros, which I really like. And it's a good comparison of the difference with the Akuchi compared to Paul Alexander's other designs. Now I haven't had his other two knives that he has uh, done as collaborations with Spyderco, which are the Parada and the Sliverax, but they have they share a more similar design, much more similar design to the Aroboros than to the Akuchi. Uh, so the Akuchi is a, a little bit of a departure in design for Paul Alexander. And in a video, he said that that was part of the point. He wanted to make something that was different and uh, that would fit uh, a relatively long blade into a, a really thin and small handle with the compression lock uh, and make it so that the blade does fit pretty much entirely into the handle so that you can put this in your pocket and have it not take up very much space. And it really does that. I would say that this knife is, is kind of a modern gentleman's knife. So it's a knife that you can put in your pocket, have it not take up very much space at all. It even kind of lines up with your pocket. So when you put it down into the pocket, this curved you know, back of the, of the knife of the handle is where your hand would go down in. So there's no flipper that sticks out, you know, to kind of catch your hand on. Uh, the blade is not tall, you know, again, it's completely inside the handle. So you don't have to worry about it, you know, pushing against your phone or anything like that. And it, it really, I think, is successful in its design as a modern folding gentleman's knife. And I, I appreciate that. I think it's a really cool design. It gets uh, a relatively good amount of edge. So the blade is about 3.25 inches with about 3.2 inches of actual cutting edge uh, into, again, a relatively small handle. And as always, I really like the spider coat wire clip. So it sits deep in your pocket. You don't have to worry about it taking up too much space and just, you know, looks cool also with the blade sitting completely inside the handle. And as you can see, he put this hole through the handle so that you can see all the way through because of that Spyderco trademark hole. And now the hole is obviously not functional on this knife, but it is a cool little design feature. So definitely a, a very cool design. It has a nice thin full flat grind, so it would slice relatively well. Uh, and I, I haven't used it a whole, whole lot for, you know, heavy cutting, which again is, is not what I think this knife is really designed for. And actually in a video, Paul Alexander says the same, that it's more of a, you know, light use knife. But it, it does cut well, it's relatively thinly ground. It has an upswept type blade and really kind of, again, going with the gentleman's knife design style. It reminds me, funnily enough, of the Rough Rider Bow Trapper. So this is a, a popular knife from Rough Rider, which is a budget uh, traditional slip joint brand and also a modern knife brand. Uh, but it, it kind of has some similar design to it. As you can see, they both have the upward turned blade and the downward turned handle. The Akuchi is just a little bit less extreme on both than the Bow Trapper. Um, so easy to carry, fits in the pocket well, it is you know a nice blade for use has very very usable point um, but it does have some things that that i am not a big fan of so first of all here from a construction standpoint the carbon fiber on this and it's really hard to show this in video but it, it's a little different than other carbon fiber from spyderco that i've seen and the main thing here is that there are voids basically at every intersection of the weave so 
A good comparison here is the Spyderco Watu, uh, which is a, a favorite of mine and has you know a lot of the same features actually: compression lock, wire clip, um, carbon fiber laminate handles. But it's a very different carbon fiber, so it's it's less textured. Uh, the texture is much smaller, uh, so it's a closer texture on the Ikuchi, uh, but it's also duller looking. So the Watu has uh, much more shine, chatoyance, uh, or whatever you call it. Um, and it doesn't have those voids, so you, you can't really see the voids there. Um, whereas on the Akuchi, each of these you know intersections where the weave comes together, there is a, a, a noticeable uh, void. Um, so that's an interesting thing. I don't know if it means that it's lower quality carbon fiber, I, I don't know. I don't have a whole whole lot of knives with carbon fiber, but to me it does you know, look less quality. It doesn't look as good as the carbon fiber again on the Watu. Uh, so that's one thing that, that I'm not a big fan of on, on this knife. Another thing is that this cutout for the compression lock is really, really small. So again, I'll show you a comparison to the Aerobros. You can see this difference in shape of the cutout to access the compression lock, and then also with the Watu. And so the Watu is a good example because it shows you why I think this cutout is small. You can see that on the Watu, you're not gonna get cut by it, but there is a little bit of you know exposure of that edge there. Um, I've never had any kind of issue with it whatsoever, but it, it is exposed somewhat. Now, because the blade sits completely in the handle of the Akuchi, and it does you know, sit deeply within the handle, if you look here, that edge is pretty much along this cutout. So if this cutout were to be made a semicircle, like on the Watu and the Ouroboros, and most compression lock knives from Spyderco, that edge would be pretty exposed to the point where I think you, you might be able to cut your finger on it. So I do think that that's why this cutout is so small and shaped differently than on other compression lock knives from Spyderco. But it does still work, you just have to do it a little bit differently. So rather than like on the Ouroboros where you, put, you can put your full, whole finger pretty much, the pad of your finger against the lock, and same deal on the Watu, the pad of your finger actually goes onto that uh, lock bar. On the Akuchi, you have to use your, your fingernail. So I, I just can't get the pad of my finger on that you know, lock bar effectively. So I actually use my fingernail to unlock it. So actually getting my fingernail against that to unlock it. And it does work, I haven't really fumbled with it too much in, in actual use, but it's a little different, it's something you have to get used to, and not as, I guess, intuitive as the normal compression lock, you know, unlocking. So that's, that's another thing uh, that I'm not a huge, huge fan of, but I think it's a necessity uh, because of the design. The next thing that I don't really like, though, I don't think is a necessity. And what this is called by a lot of places is a wheel lock, or I'm sorry, not a wheel lock, a wheel flipper. And the reason for that is because rather than a flipper tab, like um, on even this knife, which I'm gonna, I'm actually not a fan of the flipper on this knife either, but this is the Civivi Kiwi. So it has more of a tab on this knife. This has completely a rounded section and you use the jimping to get, you know, purchase on it and then flip it open with that wheel. And I think that the reason for that is because it, it allows the blade again to not stick out above the handle. The flipper tab doesn't stick out above the handle like on most flippers. Um, but I, I still don't think that it's necessary. Uh, what I think could have been done here and would have been better is to make it come to kind of a square point here. So not necessarily 100% you know, an angle, but just to, to extend this out a little farther and make it even just you know, a, a, a less rounded curve, you know, less of a wheel and more of you know, a, a corner there. 
And the reason I think that would be better is because I am just not a, a big front flipper style flipping person. Um, it, it's not what I'm used to and I, I think that it's uh, less consistent for me. Uh, but that is what I think this knife was designed for. In fact, when I was watching videos of Paul Alexander showing this knife, he was doing um, front flipper with his thumb here, and I can do it, but again, I don't know. I mean, I'm, maybe I'm just not as dexterous, but it's not how I like to, to open a flipper knife. Um, it's just it's just not as, as intuitive and, and easy for me. It's tough to do, particularly with my thumb then even with your index finger, you have to really get over the top of this. So on a normal flipper, you can kind of set right on, on the tab and press down. And on this knife, sometimes that works, but sometimes your finger slips off. And even it'll sometimes only open it part way like that. So how you get this to work consistently is to wrap your finger over the top of it and pull down. And it does flip really well once you get used to that. Again, front flipper style is what I would call it flipping. So you have to wrap your finger up over the top. Now that said, it is not very easy to, to consistently flip this knife if your finger is wet or if your hand is wet. Um, it just isn't super, super secure. And that's because rather than pressing into you know, a, an actual structure, you're, you're just relying on the friction that you get from the jimping. So if your hand's wet, you know, you get less of that friction and it's harder to actually break that detent successfully and get the blade all the way open. Um, I, I didn't have that happen a whole lot, uh, but I do think it's something to be aware of if you're, if you use a knife with your hands wet relatively frequently, this knife might be a little bit harder to open. And again, I just think that they, that Paul Alexander could have designed this with a little bit more abrupt of a, of a corner here, and it would still have the design characteristics that he was aiming for. It wouldn't need to go above the frame of the knife. The tab would not need to extend above the frame. It would just need a little bit different of a curve. And even with a little bit different of a curve, it wouldn't extend in front of the handle here when the knife is open. So I do wish that that was designed a little differently. And, and to bring it in again here, I had the same thing with the Civivi Kiwi. I just wish that instead of being designed specifically for front flipper style flipping, it was designed for both, which you can still definitely use front flipper style flipping if this knife had more of a tab here came out to a little bit higher of a corner um, but you could definitely use more classic style flipping more effectively so I wish it I wish that it had that but I still think that it's a cool knife I, I'm not sure that it's a knife that I am going to keep but it's something that if you are comfortable with that front style flipping and you are looking for specifically a modern gentleman's knife I think that this is, is a knife that, that would work well for you. Now for me, as someone who doesn't love front style flipping, it doesn't, doesn't work as well as I had hoped. Um, it's not as intuitive and you know, I, I like to really like how you open a knife. You know, it's, it's something where it should be you know, fun to open and close it because let's be honest with ourselves, when we're buying knives of this price range, we're not doing it for pure practicality. We're doing it because we enjoy them as you know tools, as functional art, and you know because it's fun to flip them open and closed. And if that statement upsets you, so I'm sure I'll get somebody commenting like, "Oh, it's always a tool," and you're you know whatever. Uh, if that statement upsets you, I think you know take it easy. You know we're we're all just having fun with this hobby. And for me, I think someone else would appreciate this knife more than I do. But I, I still do like the design. I think that it's cool that it's named after a Japanese sea monster. That's what the Akuchi uh, name comes from. And it does look like a kind of uh, you know serpent monster. That you, you can see the, the, the connection with the name. So um, very cool design. Definitely a modern gentleman's knife and would work well for someone who wants that and is comfortable with the front style flipping. 
Uh, so that's my thoughts on this knife. And if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and uh, click the thumbs up. You can also subscribe to my channel and click the bell for notifications so you know when I post new videos. Also check out my social media. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Knife Thoughts and my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on knives like this and knife related topics. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.